What's going on guys, my name is Renegade, today we're here for another episode of AKW q and This week I'm going to be answering your questions you guys left in my Discord server of course, so if you want to leave questions for the next episode of this series, then I suggest you do the same by going to my Discord server, link in the description, or you can just leave questions in the comment section down below, whatever suits you. Now I have a really big list of questions for this week's episode, so I'm going to try and get through them quickly, but it's probably going to be a bit longer than normal. Uh, but yeah, without any further ado, let's get into the first question. First question this week is coming from Black Ice, and they asked, What do you think about the concept that people create a new AKW character, record them leveling it up, and then upload it to YouTube? Would you do something like, th like that yourself in the future? So, he's referring to a series, I think Frosty Mate started the trend, and then Shy Hero has with it as well. A generic, it's a pretty generic trend to do um, within the community, it's been done a bunch of times. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's essentially just like a fresh start series. It's what they, they sort of market it as. Um, and it's, it's actually a, a really good idea. Like I've, I've watched the, their, their series is on it and it's, uh, it's been pretty entertaining to watch. So, um, yeah, I, I honestly, I, I've kind of considered it before and I kind of still am considering doing one. Um, the main problem for me is that it's very time consuming and it's not, it's very boring content. It takes a long time to edit and it's, I don't really have like the, the right mindset for it because I, how I edit is I tend to look at the, the content and be like, all right, how much of this is actually entertaining? What should I leave in? You know, what's important? And when I look at AQW, I tend to just think the entire thing isn't entertaining. So I don't really have a good eye for like what's entertaining and what's not within AQW, but I, I might give it a go, I don't know. The next question is coming from Hanky Taylor, and they asked, when and why did you stop enjoying the game? Very simple uh, question for me. Um, I enjoyed the game back in 2010 when I first started playing. Um, I had fun or whatever, moved on to bigger and better games. And then I came back in 2014, late 2014, to come back and, you know, revisit the game. And I never, like, came back and was like, this game is fun again. It was more just, this game has an opportunity for me to make videos on it, because at the time I was already making videos in other games, so it was like, hey, I can make videos on AKW, this doesn't seem to be that many people doing it, and so I just joined in on the, the hype train and I guess just started making AKW videos from there. Um, I pretty much haven't enjoyed the game since 2010. The next question ties in quite nicely, it's from Ninja with a Rocket Launcher, and they asked, what in your mind is the ideal MMO and how far is AKW from that standard? So ideally, I, I, I mean, I don't even play any other MMOs really, um, and I haven't really played any like of the really big ones, so I, I wouldn't really know, but in my mind, a, a good MMO RPG should, um, one, try and do the RPG thing like really well, um, where you have choice and your choice affects the scenario you're in and just everything around you and stuff. So for example, in AKW, you'd, like, you'd choose Nolgath and that choice would affect every other you know interaction you have with other players and being able to do certain content and all that. I don't know, it's, it's just, it's, I think the RPG element needs to be quite, quite good. You know, you need to have a lot of choice and be able to actually role play a character. And then the MMO part, in my mind, you know, you should be able to, you should not necessarily be forced, but it should be rewarding and fun to play with other players. It should be the best way to do things should be to play with other players. And, you know, like the most fun way to do things and the most, you know, uh, I guess interesting way to play the game would be to play with other players. And AKW is pretty far from that standard because when you play with other players, you're not actually playing with them, you're sort of just playing alongside them. It, there's kind of a, a distinct difference. You're not really interacting with them gameplay-wise in AKW. You're sort of just fighting the same monster they are and you get the same reward as them when the fight's over, but you don't ever have to worry about what they're doing. And yeah, I just think MMOs should strive to be uh, a cooperative experience rather than a single player experience, which is what I feel a lot of a lot of AKW is. Just, just feel like you're playing a single player game a lot of the time. Next question is coming from Venno, and they ask, if you were an in-game character on AKW, like Noobstein, or Noobstein, I don't know how to pronounce that, Noobs Noobstein's NPC, what type of storyline would you want behind your character? Um, my character looks like a Halloween themed character, I guess. My armor, Spider Witch, that I use is a Halloween armor, so I guess kind of like a Halloween type story behind my character would be kind of interesting. Um, maybe a Nolgath themed character. Not entirely sure. I guess I look kind of, um, not necessarily edgy, because everything's edgy in Nolgath, but like, I don't know, kind of, I don't know what the word for it. Like, I guess kind of, uh, outgoing, you know, like kind of bright colors and um, like a kind of like a flashy sort of show off look, I guess is what my character is. So if I were to fit into the Nolgath story, I'd kind of like be like the, like not necessarily, not necessarily like the jester of Nolgath, but like kind of like a, I don't know, like a, like a wackier sort of more outgoing, sort of less edgy, sort of more like less dark character from, for Nolgath. Like I still have like a dark theme, but I don't know. I'd, I'd really want to be a Nolgath character though, I think. 
Next question is coming from Joshua Zealous, and they asked, what would happen when the game uses WebGL instead of Flash? So immediately the biggest change with this is gonna be the frame rate will hopefully improve for the majority of players, you know, people with really good systems like like mine, you know, with the with decent CPUs and GPUs and stuff are gonna be able to actually harness that and use that in game, hopefully. I don't know how WebGL works. I'm just presuming here that that's what they do. Um, but yeah, that, sh that should be the biggest improvement. And also, of course, you know, a a AKW being able to utilize you know more advanced animations uh more advanced like movement and even like zone creation probably there's just a bunch more capability with the game i don't think there'd be as be that many immediate improvements apart from frame rate obviously though next one is coming from taco and they asked do you think akw would benefit more if it was integrated into a into steam as a separate application and had a better host that would increase its player base by doing so um, so I presume you're just talking about like putting it on like a marketplace of some sort like Steam you mentioned um, and then having like a, a someone marketing the game. Obviously that would increase the player base a lot but I think a big problem with that is the game in its current state is not a very good game. Um, its current player base is full of players that have been playing the game since their childhood right and so it's it, people are sticking with the game because of nostalgia but if you had a bunch of new players rush in off of the Steam marketplace People who are used to playing games like Divinity Original Sin 2, like Warframe, like Dirty Bomb, you know, these really good free-to-play games and really good paid games as well, um, you're going to be, and all of a sudden they start playing AQW, AQW doesn't compare, but it's being put into a situation where it does have to be compared, so you eliminate the excuse that, hey, this game is a, br a browser game, be nice, you know, it's got limited capabilities, it's a browser game, if you just plunk it on Steam, then you're like, you're immediately comparing it to games that are just infinitely better in every regard. So I think it would be great, there'd be a lot of new players, but at the same time, the game would, would get destroyed by critics and just by people in general. That's presuming that, that you, they would get a bunch of new players though. Next up is another question from Ninja with a Rocket Launcher, and they asked, do you think the good evil thing has weight on anything whatsoever? Um, generally, I'd say no. I haven't, I don't really remember a time when I was actually questioning my choice. Uh, being a good or evil character, I've just always been an evil character and it's never been able to influence my gameplay in any way. In terms of story, I, there are obviously, obviously cutscenes and stuff where you have to make a decision based on whether you're evil or good, uh, but generally doesn't affect the outcome of anything, doesn't generally affect all that much stuff, so I'd say it doesn't really have any weight on anything whatsoever, but there are factions like Dage and Nogath that sort of have come in to sort of replace that sort of faction war kind of thing. You know how in other games you have factions that are like always against each other like i think it's horde and alliance and well i guess dage and nogath have come along and sort of been the horde alliance sort of equivalent of that and now we have just have dage and nogath as, as that sort of thing instead of good and evil but I, I guess akw originally wanted it to be good and evil but there's just barely any content for good because you need to remember dage and, and nogath are both evil characters they're both part of the evil storyline technically so ah i don't know it's kind of it's kind of a bit bit crappy for the good side of things at the moment our next question is another one from Taco, and they asked, do you think it would be cool if AKW had a free membership thing every last weekend of every month or something like that? You know, you'd, you'd basically, everyone would be able to test out membership for a little bit. Um, I think that would be an awesome idea, honestly. There'd be obviously like logistics that have to work out. You know, there are certain classes that you can unlock with membership that you that you can still use when you have, when you're a non-member or whatever. But generally, yeah, this would be a really cool idea. Um, It'd be good to see players sort of understand what they get with membership because it's not really advertised all that well. You know, they don't really advertise that you get access to zones like slash join Nightmare and slash join Honor Hall that are like objectively better than non-member variants. But yeah, I, I, I totally think this, that could be a cool idea, I guess, but they'd have to balance it out with stuff. Like, there'd be, there'd be a lot of stuff to work out. Next question is coming from Scorch slash Ramon G, I think, or Ramon, no, Ramon G. Um, and they asked, which reputation classes should they revamp and why? Uh, two immediately come to mind for me, just off the top of my head. Uh, Evolved Shaman and... Uh, uh, what's it called? Oh my god. Uh, Master Ranger. I couldn't remember the name for a second. Those two classes there are both really terrible in, in their current state. Evolved Shaman especially, it's like, this is supposed to be the evolved version of Shaman, yet Shaman is infinitely better. Evolve Shaman has some like the support mechanics and stuff, but generally from what I can remember using it, it seemed to be really terrible. Um, I'd, I'd love for that class to get a buff, and I'd love for Master Ranger to get a buff just because it, it just, it's just, I haven't used it in ages, and it just, it just doesn't, I, I honestly, I honestly can't even remember it. I just know that everyone complains about it. Master Ranger is, I just remember it being bad. <laughs> Exiled Hooker asks, 
what are underrated soloing classes and farming classes? So he's, he's asking me to list some underrated and uh, farming and soloing classes. So an underrated farming class for me would be um, Mage. Mage is actually really good. It's not anywhere near as bad as the other three starter classes. It's got like a decent AoE ability and you can actually get some decent hits off of it sometimes. Um, it's, obviously it's not that good, but it's, it's, it's underrated, definitely. Um, and then for soloing, um, I'd probably say maybe, maybe healer. Nah, healer's pretty bad. Uh, I don't know really. The soloing, this sort of just to be, seems to be like a cut group of classes that are that are just really good. Um, maybe Legion Doom Knight. I don't know. Legion Doom Knight's already quite quite well respected. Um, I can't really think of any to be honest for the soloing side of things. But yeah, probably um, probably mage for the farming class there. Our next question is coming from Hole, and it's it's Hole, so you can you can presume it's a good question. Do you think AKW should imp implement a little exchange system where you turn in certain amounts of requirements like gold, I don't know, like other farming items um, for ACs? If you agree, think of yourself as a dev. How are you going to set it up where there won't be any exploits or exposures to abuse it? How do you plan it to set that standard up? So there's actually a system like this in WoW, I think, where you can turn in your WoW gold for uh, battle.net credit. And actually battle.net credit can be used, or I think it's just I think it's just Blizzard app now. I don't know if the Battle.net system has been fully phased out yet or whatever, but you can buy other Blizzard games and Blizzard in-game items and stuff. So, for example, if you're a, a, like a really experienced WoW player and you've got like a lot of gold, you can go and buy um, Overwatch with your gold. I don't know the, like the logistics of all that, and I don't know how like unrealistic that is, but I know for a fact that you can use your WoW gold to buy um, other stuff from Blizzard. So there were people that when Destiny 2 came out on PC yesterday. Uh, people went and bought Destiny 2 with their WoW Gold, which is like, it's, that's just fucking mind-blowing. And it's insane, and they've balanced it in such a way where it's, I think it's pretty well balanced, and people still buy stuff, and it's 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 awesome, it's a really good system. So if that was an AQW sort of equivalent with like ACs or whatever, that would be amazing, but at the same time, I probably am going to have to come along to the standpoint of disagreeing with this, to be honest, because um, I don't think it would suit AQW, because AQW's only way they make money is through ACs and, and uh, membership. And so if they made some sort of way to get around that, and they allowed players, if they were experienced and were willing to put the time and effort in to um, purchase it with in-game items or in-game gold, then they'd have to make it either A, really inefficient, or they'd have to B, crack down on botting and just all that sort of like exploits and, you know, glitches and stuff like hardcore. They'd have to like make the game, you know, just in insanely balanced in terms of just being able to farm and all that sort of thing i don't know it, in theory it's a really nice idea i love the idea behind that and it's such a it's just that's it's amazing honestly but uh i feel like the players also i feel like the players that are dedicated that would be the type of players that would buy stuff in game like that and would have the amounts of gold to buy acs or whatever those players are the ones who buy most of the acs anyway so i feel like aqw would just lose a lot of money and the game would probably die because of it not 100% sold on that idea, I don't know. It, there's be a lot of logistical stuff to work out, and honestly, I don't think I, I'm, a, I'm a qualified person to answer this question in full, but good question anyway. Next question is again from Hanky Taylor, and they asked, if you had to delete one rare class, which one would you delete? So let's go to my character page and we'll look through the list. Um, okay, first one that comes to mind for me is Classic Legion Doom Knight, just because I think that actual Legion Doom Knight is better. Um, from my memory, and it's... I don't really use it anyway. Um, probably not one of the... I wouldn't delete Chrono Dragon Knight, just because that's, like, really unique and fun. Uh, maybe... I don't know if... I guess Dark Battle Mage? No, that's not even rare. Never mind. Um, it's a hard question, actually. I'd, I'd probably go with Classic Legion Doom Knight, actually. Um, I don't even remember how many of these are actually rare. Because uh, obviously some of them are rare, but they're, uh, they're just, like, reskins. Or, uh, whatever, so like they're not actually rare technically. Um, yeah, I'm going with I'm going with classic Legion Doom Knight. Next question is coming from Azar, and they asked, should AE bring the Wheel of Doom back? Why and why not? So first of all, I th I believe he means that we he, if AE should bring back the exact Wheel of Doom that was in the game before, which I unfortunately missed. Um, and I'd say no, just because I don't want rare items to come back. I feel like those items should just stay rare. I'd re I, what I'd really love is if they made another like Wheel of Doom type event with new items, like a I don't know, like a reskin of the event, like same sort of event, but just all new items, all new stuff. That was that would be super cool. I I love the whole like concept of the Wheel of Doom. Never got to experience it, so not entirely sure how like fun it was at the time. But just 
awesome concept and honestly I, I'd love for that to come back in another form like for more for different Wheel of Doom items maybe I don't know it was just cool at the time I think I wasn't there though our next question is coming from Milu. Now I've tried to record this audio for this question in particular like five times now and I always end up blabbing on for like five minutes. So let me know in the comments if you want this question in particular to be a separate video which I'll go in depth over all my pieces of advice. So Milu asks, top five pieces of advice for people who are starting up an AKW YouTube channel. So my top five pieces of advice are consistency, thumbnails, uh, original or unique content, Use commentary over, you know, talking in game, and I guess collaborate. It's probably a good another good one. I don't know. Let me know if you think that would be a uh, good topic for another separate video. I can't cover this question in particular really in depth now. It just takes too long. Um, but if you want that to be a separate video, then let me know. Next up is a question from Evolved or Yes Yesen Yesen. Uh, do you like the fact that some classes go rare and others don't? If you could implement to bring back all the classes into the class shop, would you do so? Uh, so, he's basically asking, um, should classes go rare and would you bring back all the old classes? Um, honestly, if I could, I would bring back all the old classes. I think classes are such a central part of the gameplay, I don't think that should be something that goes rare. I think variants of classes, like Royal Vampire Lord and all that, should go rare. I think that's fine, that's a cool thing, and I, I do believe in the whole rarity system. I know some games don't have a rarity system at all, you know. Uh, they, the most rarity you get is like an item that's difficult and that would be like considered a rare item But in AKW a rare item is an item that will eventually be gone from the game and no longer able to be obtained Which is really cool and I think it's a, a really interesting mechanic that really sort of fleshes out the whole like uh, I guess costume building aspect of AKW and like like dress up part of AKW which is a big part of the game so I agree with the rarity system, but not necessarily with classes, because classes are such an integral part of the gameplay. I think that um, they're too much of an influential thing to go rare. I think cosmetic should be where the line is drawn in terms of uh, stuff going rare. So yeah, I would bring back all the old classes, but obviously that would piss off a lot of players that uh, have the rare version or whatever, or they, they have those classes and they are happy with the fact that they're going rare or whatever. So I don't know. They wouldn't. I wouldn't... I wouldn't expect the community to be happy with my decision, but at the same time, from a selfish point of view, I want those old classes, and I think, honestly, it'd be best for everyone if those classes were available for everyone to use. Next up is another one from Black Ice, and they asked, what did you think of this year's Mogluin event, Blood Moon, both story and items-wise? So, a couple of days' time, we're getting a new part of this storyline, but the last two parts have been pretty disappointing, in my opinion. Really cool that we got the new class. That was obviously really awesome. Always love new classes coming out. Um, but yeah, the honestly the event itself was kind of disappointing. It didn't really pay attention to the storyline and in terms of gameplay uh, I, I mean, it's it's just AKW and it's just like it's just kind of boring for me um, Obviously, I'm a very this is I'm not the right person you should ask this question to the event for most AKW players is actually probably really good But for me personally one I don't get items. I generally don't farm for items. I don't get hyped over items I have my one set that I use and I will eventually change my set just saying but my set that I use is the items that I need, and so any items outside that, I don't really give a crap about, so items don't excite me. Bank pets and classes do, and uh, I don't know. There's not really anything else that was in this event, so for me at least, so I don't know. It was it was just kind of boring, especially the latest part, which I think a lot of players actually do agree with. It's kind of very short, but uh, hopefully the war this weekend is going to be fun. I, I always do enjoy wars, but that'll be, uh, that'll be for for this weekend, I guess. Next up is a couple of questions from Migo, and they asked, with the recent torrent of AKW Wars, what is even the point in all this fighting, or do you think that, that this is just stalling tactics so AKW, so AE doesn't have to bother with AKW for weeks upon weeks? Um, I kind of disagree with that, to be honest. For one, I don't remember the last war that happened. Then again, I'm not, I don't really play all the events, and sometimes I don't even pay attention to the event that comes out every week, so... I don't know, I, I don't remember there being that many wars recently though, so I, th I feel like it's been a while since the last war, but again, don't pay attention, might be wrong there. Um, is there even a point in all this fighting? I guess, I don't know, I don't pay attention to story either, so wrong person you're asking here. Um, and yeah, I guess it is a stalling tactic. It seems like it's easy content for them, them to make compared to like a new part of the Seven Deadly Dragons or something like that. Um, so I guess they're delaying, but I don't know. 
Their Migo's second question was, do you think AE should do more high risk, high reward classes like Shadowstalker of Time as opposed to simple button matches like Lightcaster? 100% yes, 100, 150% yes. Uh, simple button mashes uh, the very reason why AKW is a bad game in my opinion like ugh, I, I hate saying statements like that because I always go back on them but it's it's one of the biggest reasons why AKW is a bad game there we go um, obviously th this the problem goes much deeper than that but um, yeah it's a uh, it's simple button mashes yeah I, I really do despise them um, Shadowstalker of Time, when I first when I first sort of got it, it just seemed like a really complicated and hard to use class, but once I sort of learnt the class and learnt the combos and stuff, it became a really sort of, wow, this class is challenging me mentally to think about like what I'm doing. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about what I'm doing, at the very least I'm sort of considering my next combo. At the very least I'm, I'm thinking more than normal. You're still, he okay, here's the thing, let's, let's have a little tangent here. Here's the thing, the, honestly, the best classes in the game are the ones that are best played with uh, human decisions. So in the moment, you are thinking about your next move. You're not thinking of a combo. You're not pressing two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five. That is not the most efficient way to use the class. The most efficient way to use the class is to make human decisions in the moment. Um, you, you might be thinking like, what's the difference? Well, a a class that requires that does not require human decision making even though i love this class is shadow stalker of time you at the end of the day you are hitting a very complicated yes but uh at the end of the day it's still just a combo right you're still just pressing buttons in the right order on your keyboard and at the end of the day you could program a bot to use the class and it would be its most efficient state however a class like Card Clasher, because it's random and you have to you consume your cards and you're like dealing them out and you're making a decision based on the cards that get dealt, you are, the most efficient way to use that class is to react to the decision that you are being handed. So you deal the cards. Oh, I don't like those cards. I'm going to deal them some more. Oh, I don't like those cards. I'm going to deal some more. Oh, I like those cards. They're good for my current situation. I'm going to use those. And that, that choice is a human choice. A bot will either be very, uh, very, will either not be able to make that decision at all, or will be challenged at making that decision. You know, a bot's gonna have a trouble, a hard time making a decision like that. That's where classes shine in AKW, and from my knowledge, the only class that does this is Card Clasher, which is why it's my favorite class. It's, it's the only class that requires you to think, be like, hmm, I'm gonna use this ability next because of the cards that are dealt on screen rather than, I'm going to use this ability next because it's the next ability in my combo. Shadowstalker of Time isn't that bad because it's such a complicated and, and uh, intricate combo that you're really, you know, almost having to think in a human way about your next combo, but it's still, it's at the end of the day, you could program a bot to do it and it would do it fine. Whereas Card Clasher, yes, you can go 2 3 2 3 2 3 2 3 2 3 whatever, but the most efficient way to use the class is to not do that and is to just make decisions. So, uh, t yeah, rant aside, yeah, button mashes uh, are cancer, and I'd, I'd love for more classes like Sh Shadowstalker of Time, maybe, or Card Clasher, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, I'd love that, to be honest. That would be great. Our next question is coming from Janko, and they asked, Is AKW now a glorified fashion game? I hear this all the time, honestly. Even back, way back in 2010, this, this, was thro this statement was thrown around a bunch. And uh, yeah, of course it is. It, of course it's a glorified fa fashion game. Does that make the game any less of what it is? You know what I mean? Like, is it less of a game? Is it less of a, of a? Uh, I don't want to say great game because it's not a great game, but I don't know. Is it? Is it? Does it take away from the experience? No. Um, it's it's a, it's a glorified fashion game. Your what? What's the point in farming for, Archfiend Doomlord if all that it's? Ah, uh, fuck! I don't even know. Does that item give you stat uh, like? Percentage rewards. I oh, fuck. I don't know. Um, what about um uh, a item like Enchanted Northgarth Nation House? What's the point in farming that? Ah, it gives you quests. Hold on. Let me let me just think of an item that doesn't actually give you anything aside from cosmetic. Uh, Legion Titan. What's the point in farming Legion Titan? No, you need it to accept the Coward Bog. What's the point in, in farming the Coward Bog if all it does is just it's it's just an, it's just a cosmetic. Most items in this game are cosmetic, right? What's the point in buying the new armor with 2000 ACs or whatever? Or what's the point in buying an Able Commander if all it is is just a cosmetic? All it is is just an item that you can wear. Of 
course it's a fashion game, but is that a bad thing? No, it's a great thing, honestly. Like, I, I don't really play any other games that encourage this much showing off and fashion and all that. So yeah, it's totally great. And the fact that the rarity system is so widely used on so many events and stuff means that everyone has their own, like, little unique thing that they wear. Everyone has their own, like, set. And uh, it's, it's honestly one of the best parts of the game, in my opinion. It's, the, like, probably the strongest part of this game. The only part that I would not change in any way. The fact that people can have rare items that are their own and can create sets that look unique and interesting. That's, like, my probably my favorite part of the game, to be honest. And finally, to wrap up the super long episode of AQW q &A, we have a question from Mike, and they asked, What's your opinion on a good account? An account with a fair amount of, you know, 08 to 11 rares, 2008, 2011 rares, or an account with mostly every single end item game, an end item, uh, end item, end game item, holy shit. Um, end game items being stuff like Void High Lord, Archfiend Doom Lord, Enchanted Norgath Nation House, Legion Merge Gear, or whatever. What would you pick if you had to choose? So, uh, my idea of a really good account is probably more nostalgia, like old items over. Uh, really hard to get items. In saying that, my account by that measure would be like kind of bad because I don't really have many like old items or whatever. I, oh, I might in my bank. I don't know. I don't actually know what's in my bank. To be honest, it's just a fucking mess. Um, but yeah, if, I mean, if you look at my character page, I'm just trying to display all my classes, which is like my kind of gimmick that I'm going for right now on my character page. But I don't, I don't have many like old rare items. So the only, actually, I think the only way to tell that my account is. Uh, 2010 account is to look at my um, holiday cast of 10 for some reason I kept that item all these years and so I do have holiday cast of 10 in my bank which is uh, the only relic of a of a bygone time um, honestly for me but yeah back to the question um, a good accounts probably probably more uh, nostalgia items in my opinion that's totally my opinion though but yeah if you have void high lord and enchanted Norgath nation house and all that my immediate reaction is to think you're a botter, unfortunately. It's just the way the game is, so I don't, and I don't tend to respect a player and think that they have a really good account if they've just botted items. You know, it doesn't doesn't make you a good player. Um, and so, I don't know. My idea of a good player is a player that shows loyalty to the game, and a player that shows loyalty is a player that has old items. I don't know, that's just my opinion. Totally can see both sides of the argument, though. I mean, if you're a god and you've got, like, all the end game items and you're just fucking repping Nogath the hardcore or whatever then yeah totally you're an amazing dude with heaps of shit and props to you but yeah my opinion is is probably the other the other side is is loyalty over hard work which is kind of weird either way hopefully you guys enjoyed this video other episodes won't be this long hopefully um I did have a bunch of questions to get through and I was going to split it into two episodes but I just thought fuck it you know it's people like long stuff I guess sometimes probably not uh, yeah, if you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and remember to leave all those questions Discord server, comment section, Twitter, whatever. Just leave them somewhere, and I'll, I'll be, be able to screenshot them and put them in the next episode. Peace.